Where are we at? What are we doing? Hey, this is Jason over at CoPower Sports, and I'm here with my mini bike, and it has not ran for a few months. So I'm going to try to see if I can get this engine started. If not, I may need some help. Click, click. All right, I have gas. I made sure both my on and off switches are in the on position. I tried to choke my Makuni carburetor. The issue probably is that the gas has been sitting here for a while and it just needs to be cleaned up. I just need a buddy right now. I'll call my buddy Paul. It's tearing up my heart when I'm with you. Go for Paul. Hello. I need you, bud. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. What's up? What's up? So, Paul, my bike has been sitting for months and I cannot get it started. Okay. What would you do? Well, with this day and age, our gas goes bad literally like of a month. So let's probably start with draining the tank, cleaning the tank out, and cleaning the carburetor, and let's just get it, see if that'll get it started. And then we can do a little bit of maintenance, especially since it's been sitting. Okay, perfect, let's get it. So since this bike's been sitting for a while, um, we're gonna go ahead and, like I said, clean the uh, tank out, drain all the fuel, and we're gonna take the carb off and clean it. Sometimes you can clean them on the bike, but since this one's been sitting so long, it's just gonna be much easier to take it off. It's way easier just to go ahead and take your side plates off when you work on the bike. Go ahead and take your cable off. Should just unscrew on the top, and the whole slide assembly will come out. These normally don't get real dirty, except for dirt of just riding if you have, you know, you're missing your rubber boot or anything. But it's always good just to visually inspect everything. What are you looking for? Mainly just dirt or wear. But you'll be able to notice it. Look at this one, it's pretty clean. Check the wear here and where your idle screw rests here. You can check that. If there's any big grooves that go over the whole carb, you may just have to replace your carburetor because this stuff does wear out. Get a drain bucket or something to drain all your fuel into depending on how much fuel you have. Turn the gas off. Take the air filter off first. So I heard some fuel lines get a little hard after sitting a while. Yeah, there are some uh, fuel lines out there that we use, mainly the colored stuff, that after a while they seem to get hard. And after you've taken them on and off, they just don't go back on and seal good. There are fuel lines out there that are resistant to that. Doesn't mean it's a 100% guarantee, but even this one's been sitting for um, however long and however old this fuel line is since he built the bike. Um, and it's still pliable. So this is the good stuff and you can get that on our website as well. And just work it off slowly so you don't uh, break your carburetor. And I use pliers so you can pinch the end as well so it doesn't leak, make a mess all over everything. We're just gonna let it sit here and drain this tank uh, just so we don't have to worry about old gas sitting in the tank. No point in cleaning your carburetor, still using this old gas. And this scenario works for methanol or any fuel that you're running. If you've let your carburetor sit and it's gummed up or, or has uh, corrosion in it, just clean your tank. It's the first step, you know, of fuel going into your carburetor. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the carb. Um, I like to use brake cleaner, but you can use carb cleaner. The brake cleaner, in my opinion, they uh, it dries a little bit faster. So I like to spray around the intake that I'm gonna take off, just so no dirt falls into my motor. I like to take it off here by the uh, with the whole intake and everything just so I don't have to recenter this because this is the number one issue we have uh, that customers call in is when this gets off or is not sealed correctly it's going to suck in air which cause it to uh, run funny. So 
Sometimes this gasket rips, so make sure you pay attention to it really good uh, when you pull it off. And if you want to, just replace it every time. So we're gonna go ahead and drop the bowl. That's where we're gonna start. We're gonna clean it off a little bit. Just be careful not to get it in your eyes. It's probably best to wear goggles. Be careful not to mess up the gasket. They usually come off pretty good, but in this part is if you're gonna take the gasket off, don't spray your brake cleaner or carb cleaner on that gasket, because it'll swell up and it will never go back in. So when you look at it visually, it's actually pretty clean in here. Nine times out of 10, what clogs up is gonna be this little jet right here, but we're gonna go ahead and remove everything just to be sure. All right, so the first thing we're gonna take out is the main jet. Um, it's actually connected to your emulsion tube here, um, but when you unscrew it, most of the time the emulsion tube and jet come out as one. If it's really dirty, you need to get you a wrench to hold this in place and use your flathead to bust it loose. But in this uh, case, it's really not that dirty. So we're just gonna spray a little bit of cleaner through it and then put it back in. You can always look through it into the light. So you'll look inside this little hole and you should, be a, you should be able to put it up to the sun or to a light and you should see pretty good amount of light in there. So this one on almost every carburetor is your main culprit for running issues, especially if you let them sit. The jet size is so small, a grain of sand will clog it up. Just take your flathead and unscrew it. So if you don't have one already, this is just an old cable. This is actually off of a lawnmower, but you can use an old mini bike throttle cable or anything that's the little braided wire. Unravel a little bit, and if you look at the cable, there's probably 50 little wires in there. And I've been using these same two for probably 10 years. But this is a perfect low speed jet cleaner. It's always smaller than every low speed jet I've ever had on any of these little carburetors. And it's perfect for poking them in and cleaning the main or the low speed jet. And I like to run it back and forth a little bit and just spin it around and do this. There's no pressure on it. It just cleans any of the corrosion or buildup that might be in the hole. And always go back with a little bit of cleaner and just spray it. This one, you can do the same trick where you put it up to the sun or a light and look, but the hole's gonna be really, really small. But if you can see light through this, there's it, it should be fine. So another thing to always look at is your float and needle. Take your pin out. And in this case, that was part of his problem. When I pulled this out, there was actually some pressure here, so I know that this needle was stuck in here. That's probably why it wouldn't run. And when I drank, when I took this carburetor off, there wasn't very much fuel that came out of the bowl because this was stuck. It wasn't allowing the fuel to go into it. So that's the thing that was stuck. So this here, this little hoop, fits over this little bracket here, like that. And that's to keep it from falling off. And then the little piece on top is spring-loaded. You always want to check that. If this ever gets stiff, this needle is bad, even if the, the tip is still good. You can kind of see on this tip, there's a black little groove where it was stuck in the brass. I like to just use my finger and just kind of wipe it off. Even though there's a groove on it, you shouldn't have any issues, but if you look at it and you can actually physically see a groove in it, um, it's, it's not gonna be any good. In this case, it's just a little sticky, so I'm just gonna clean it off a little bit and it's good to go. You can look inside your seat here of the carburetor. If you have any corrosion in there, go ahead and clean that out. You can use a little Q-tip if needed. If you look overall it's pretty clean i think this i think this bike got lucky that the, the needle was stuck a little bit to not allow any fuel to sit in here and clog anything up i think his only issue was the little bit of a corrosion on the needle so i just sprayed it out a little bit to rinse out any of the old gas contamination and we're going to go ahead and put it back together how many carburetors do you think you've opened up 
thousands. <laughs> I was honestly about to tell you this, to say something about that. It's best to probably do this on the bench. Take this all, take this assembly off and go put it on a workbench or a work table, if it's, especially if this is your first time. Lay out a couple of clean napkins so you can see every little thing. I've done this thousands of times, so I know exactly what to look for or what pieces are needed. And remember, the jets can be clogged up by one grain of sand. So when you're putting everything back, make sure no dust is falling in here or your hands are somewhat clean and it doesn't get inside your carburetor. On some carburetors, not this one in particular, but on some of them, if you gotta do the low speed jet first before you put the main jet in, so I just use that as a habit. It doesn't have to be super tight. The brass is very soft, so it, it snugs in there pretty good. Once you get a little bit of resistance, that's all you need. These can only go on one way. Just be gentle when you're putting it back so you don't bind up the float. And a trick I always do is I set it on there and I'll bounce it a few times so I can listen to make sure that the float is bouncing up and down in there. I do a little bit of a crisscross pattern here just to make sure that you're putting even load on the gasket. Like I said before, make sure you check your gasket. If there's any kind of rips or tears, just replace it. Cheap, cheap insurance. If you're gonna be doing some extreme riding, it might be best to put a little bit of blue Loctite on these bolts when you put them back in. Just a little bit of blue Loctite. Don't put too much that when you pull it off the next time you gotta clean your carburetor, you strip out all the threads. If you have an ultrasonic cleaner or have access to an ultrasonic cleaner, it's always good that you can just throw the whole carburetor in there and just let it do its magic as well. Make sure when you're putting your slide back in after you've laid it on your bike, it's not covered in dirt. It's only gonna go in one way. It's got the groove here that has a pin on this side and on your idle screw, the idle um, ledge here. This should work very free. If you're having to force it in, it's wrong. Once you screw it in nice and tight, take, go to your twist grip or your thumb throttle and just actuate it a few times and make sure it's nice and smooth. And there you go. That one's on, ready to go. We'll take our fuel line that we had been draining, put it back through here where it was. And reinstall. So now we gotta put our air filter back on. This is a used filter, so it's always best to wash it and then re-oil it before putting it back on. But on this filter we have, there's a few checks you need to do to make sure that it's still a good air filter to be putting back on. There's uh, three pieces on this. You got the top cap and then the bottom assembly. Make sure that it's tight. And then down here, you wanna make sure that the rubber boot is still sealed into the bottom end. In this case, you can tell that it's not straight. So this side here has been hit or crushed or dropped or here in the shop, it could have just been bumped around. So in this case, I probably wouldn't reuse this one. I would buy a new one and replace it. All right, since our other air filter needs to be replaced, we're gonna go ahead and replace it with our new uh, premium air filter. This fits the 22 aftermarket Makuni. It is a one piece design, just like our stage one air filter that everyone uh, uses and loves. A little bit better quality. It's the best air filter material that the company has to offer. It's a one piece design, so there's no pieces to come loose. This unit comes with a little bit of the mold release still on it, so there is a little bit of a prep that is involved with this air filter. 
What I like to do is get yourself a rag, a little bit of brake cleaner or carb cleaner, and I'll wipe down the mounting surface here. It has a little bit of the mold release still on it from when they make them, and all that's got to come off for it to seal really well. Take a little bit of sandpaper. Um, you know, a fine grit probably won't work well. I think this is a hundred emery cloth, and it works really well. You don't have to do heavy sanding. It's just a light coating, and all you're really doing is just giving it a little bit of a scratch surface. You don't have to do this, but we have found through the last couple of weeks testing these that if you clean all this mold release, this is almost impossible to take back off and without taking the clamp off. If you leave the mold release on there, uh, if you don't clamp it down just right, they come off. You'll know when this is ready, to, when you're done sanding it, because the mold release is very shiny. When you're done sanding it and then cleaning it back off with the brake cleaner to get all the little dust off, it'll be a dull color. So a little trick you can do is if you hold the filter up when you're sanding it in here, for me it's a little bit easier too, but it doesn't allow any dust from, when you're, from what you're wiping off in here to get into the filter. Yeah, especially on the inside, that's gonna go straight, yeah, into. <laughs> straight into the motor. If you happen to get it, no big deal. You just have to clean the filter before you use it so you won't be able to use the filter right away. So not only does it look a little dull, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the camera, but you'll be able to put your fingers on it and feel the difference. Just feeling, let's say the outside here is super smooth, and then here you'll actually be able to feel that it has a little bit of a drag on your finger so you know that there's no more of the mold release still there. Same goes for the, on the inside here. And you're not have to worry all the way inside there or anything. We're really just focusing on the mounting area here. So when you actually put it on the carburetor, you just need this little bit of a lip here because all it's mounting is right here on the carburetor. All right guys, so here is an unprepped premium air filter straight out of the box. We're just gonna mount it on be as careful as I can to get it perfectly mounted. It's hard to tell, but I'm trying to be as careful as I can, but since the mold release is still on the top, it's sliding my clamp around, and it's not even getting a very good seal here. I'm going to try to clamp it as good as I can, but I want to show how easy it is for this thing to pop off, just like that. Didn't even try. Show, show the shininess of it. So here's our prepped filter. Put it on the same way. Put the clamp on the edge. It's not coming off anymore. So one of the things we 100% recommend is the recharge kit. It's got the oil for your air filter, and it's got the cleaning kit as well. So how I like to do it is I start where the seam is, and it just gives me a reference point of where to start. And all you need to do is one good coat all the way around. You may have to spin it around twice, but just one good solid coat. This is a red spray with the gray filter, so you'll easily be able to tell where you spray it. Don't worry about the overspray. You're gonna let this soak, and then you can wipe off any excess. Since there are sides to the filter, I like to spray it one way, and then I'll go back the other way to make sure I get both sides and all the cracks and crevices. Don't worry about if you still see a little bit of gray. When you let this soak in there, it pretty much absorbs all the way into the filter. And you can always go back and add it before you put it on. It's probably better to do too little than too much. Too much, this thing will act like a bad carburetor. It's always good if you've oiled your air filter 
and it's the first time since you've let since you've sprayed it and you start and it starts to run bad pop the air filter back off and see if the bike changes because then you know you put too much oil on it not enough oil you've just wasted your time though you might as well not even oil it i normally let mine sit for at least 10 or 15 minutes um, uh, if you're in a rush but if it's best if you can just let them sit overnight and you're ready to go the next day the spray oil is the only thing we recommend for these air filters um, back in the day people used to soak them in motor oil and stuff like that but it's just not needed anymore on these type of air filters and that spray oil is going to get on this uh, surface as well so just like what we did when we prepped it Take a little bit of brake cleaner and just wipe this out, out here so it's not slippery. Nice even coats is the key. All right, now we've cleaned the carburetor, the tank's empty. We got our air filter ready to go. Since this bike's been sitting for a while and we're gonna go ahead and change the oil in it. But to change the oil, the best way to do it is make sure the oil or the engine is warm and your oil is warm so that all the contaminants and everything flow out nice and easy. Let's go ahead and put some gas in the tank. Now, types of gas to use, like as, as far as like if it's sitting a while or around here we just use regular gas um, but if you can get a hold of non-ethanol that's the best way in some parts of the country it's easier than others to get the non-ethanol is going to help the shelf life and the carburetor from gunking up as fast it still happens nothing's perfect there's a bunch of stuff you can put into the fuel, but I haven't found anything to be 100% other than just using it or cleaning it out before you let it sit. With these carburetors, we always have good luck by giving it just a little bit of throttle whenever we go to pull start them. The uh, engine's all warmed up. I've let the bike cool down for just a minute. What that allows is all the oil to settle. Um, since it's a splash system, oil is everywhere. You wanna remove as much oil as possible when you're changing the oil on these. So it's best to let them sit just a couple of minutes. Not anywhere where it's gonna cool down, just enough for the oil to drip down a little bit. Get you a little drain pan. The big question is, how often should somebody be changing the oil? I suggest to change it at least once a year, even if you're not riding it very much. But if you're riding it on occasion, it's best to do it every at least one or two hours of riding time. It sounds like a lot, but you guys have to remember there's only 16 ounces of oil in here, you know, half a quart. Most of our cars have five, six to eight quarts of oil, so they can last for a while and a filter. These have no filter. 16 ounces of oil. We run them hotter than they're supposed to be. And they get worn out. But you'll see this draining, it should be pretty dark here. I like to use the front drain bolt because inside the engine there's usually a casting in the back of the bolt or in the back of the block that would restrict oil flow coming out of the back of the engine. It's best to use the front one here. Take a 10 millimeter wrench and just bust it loose. Remember, it's gonna be a little bit warm, so be careful. There is a washer on this bolt, so be careful. And you don't wanna flip it around, it needs to go on the same way. So 
this engine oil actually doesn't look too bad. If you're changing your oil every time and it's super black or it's real thick and sludgy, you're not changing it enough. Once you've let the oil drain for a little bit, sometimes it may take a few minutes to drain. Once it starts slowing down, I wouldn't say all the way till it starts dripping. Once the oil starts slowing down, I like to rock the bike around or the motor side to side just to make sure you're getting all the oil out of the motor. So it's dripping. I'm gonna rock it a few more times just to make sure we're getting all the oil out. See, it's already going again just by moving the bike over just a little bit. Give, your, give yourself at least 10 or 15 minutes to change the oil. You wanna get all this oil out. Since there's very little oil going back in, you want every bit of good oil back in the motor. All right, so now that the oil is done draining, we're gonna put the uh, drain screw back in. I like to wipe it off, just make sure it's clean going back in, just so you're not putting any contaminants in there. You'll need a little a rag and the brake cleaner again for this. Get it screwed in. It should screw in very easy. If you're having to use tools to screw this in and it's tight, something's wrong. Take your wrench, get it snug, and then once it's snug, just give it a little bit extra, and that's all you need. I like to use my brake cleaner and spray off where the oil drained, just so when you go riding again, if there's a bunch of dirt collection, you can tell that you have a leak. So we're gonna put the uh, four-stroke engine oil Tillotson back in the motor. This got a little sight glass here on this on this bottle. We're going down to the 500 milliliters, which is half the uh, uh, half the bottle. With this being in the MB200, it's a little tight fit to get it to fit in there. So we use this funnel tube setup to make it easier to pour in. It's best to clean this area off, guys, so when you're opening it up, you're not getting dirt all right into your engine hole. Be careful here, you don't spill it all over yourself. The Tillotson engines come with a little dipstick on your, your fill plug. I don't recommend using this. If the engine's not perfectly flat, this is not gonna be a good reading. It's always best to measure the oil you're putting in your motor, and if you're not sure, just drain it and refill it again. I got the oil changed now. Everything's uh, ready to go. Tess ran it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. And button it all back up. All right, it's all buttoned back up. I'm gonna have to call Jason to get him to uh, give it a run. Go for Jason. Ready to go. I'm on my way. Oh, thank you so much, Paul. What all did you do? <laughs> so we uh, cleaned the gas tank out and we uh, cleaned the carburetor. We went ahead and added the new air filter, and we went ahead and changed the oil since this bike's been sitting and wasn't for sure how long it's been sitting. We went ahead and changed the oil so, so it's fresh for the year. Just so I know, did you put new gas in it? Fresh gas. Yay! <laughs> All right, so here we go, one pool wonder. Time. This thing sounds mean. I'm ready to go rip it. And you guys remember, better call Paul. <laughs>